Well, today let's take a look at the American dream, also known as a scam, a scheme. Uh, recently, I had to give a presentation and a couple of the slides here I thought I thought you might find interesting talking about this. And we're looking specifically at home ownership, this other form of uh, indentured servitude, slavery, whatever you want to call it. So we build our scenario. We have a homeowner, buys himself a home for 200000 And let's say 10 years later, sells it for 300000 And he thinks to himself, as would most people, I made a $100,000 profit on this home. But when we look a little bit more closely, we realize that nothing could be further from the truth. Nobody has made any money. In fact, it's one big financial boondoggle, one big fat mess, right? So looking at the spreadsheet, we'll take a look at some expenses here. One uh, is the property tax, and I have a value of $2,279 for this payment based on this article here. Now, I don't know if the Wallet Hub is reputable. I don't know, but this seemed uh, acceptable in my opinion. They say $2,279, so be it. I'll plug that number in. And we can see here at the end of 10 years, our homeowner has paid $22,790. But this is inaccurate according to our scenario here because the value of the house has gone up by 50%. And in a real world scenario, these taxes would reflect that. The, the uh, taxes go up when the tax assessor comes out and determines the value of your house is going up. So it's obviously in the state's best interest for these housing prices to increase. Now keep in mind, just because the tax assessor claims your house is worth X, doesn't mean you're gonna be able to sell it for that much, but that's irrelevant. The point being, these numbers are low. Based on this example, these taxes would be increasing as the value of the house increase. Now we move over to insurance. Got to spend, uh, I put $1,000 per year. Maybe that's low, maybe a little high, depending on where you live. Looked like it was in the ballpark, so there's another $10,000 uh, in uh, a decade spent. And then of course the big boy, the interest payments, which, um, let me just add something to our scenario. According to uh, the value penguin, Dot com. I don't know how legitimate that is. They're talking about the median duration of home ownership, about 13.3 years, meaning, and we're not talking about people who buy rental property and then rent it, you know, uh, to, to make an income. We're just talking about the average homeowner buying and living in his own house and then selling it or living in it for 13.3 years and selling it. And this becomes sort of an issue, at least as far as I'm concerned, because let's take a look at how the bankers, uh, you know, they make their, how they charge, right? You have this $200,000 mortgage at 4%, nothing outrageous here. Maybe that's a little high right now. So they calculate the total interest for 30 years, a 30 year mortgage. And what they want to do is they want to front end these payments. They want to get their interest as soon as they can. So you can see here that uh, your initial payments, you pay the most. And then year by year, the interest payments start to come down a little bit. And then, you know, toward the end, uh, they're much less than the principal that you're paying off. But if people are moving, if they're selling their homes after 13.3 years, and then buying a new one, that means that people, homeowners, are perpetually in this first 13-year block paying the bulk of the interest. You know, they don't move down here and enjoy the low pay. Enjoy, there's the term I'm using. No, they're perpetually stuck in this part of the mortgage process, or the, let's call it the, uh, the life of the mortgage in the first 13 years, always paying these ridiculous and outrageous and very high interest payments. So anyway, in our scenario, at the end of 10 years, we're going back to the 10-year plan here, 
you thought you made a hundred thousand dollars but the truth is you didn't you lost money because you've spent so much with these payments no profits were to be had it's impossible to profit off of home ownership and this doesn't take into consideration things such as the homeowners association fees and of course the general maintenance and upkeep to have a house i mean you have to change the light bulbs here and there you gotta buy vacuum cleaners and brooms and whatnot cleaning items detergents and uh you know, you'll need gas <clears throat> for your lawnmower you'll need a lawnmower so these nickel and dime charges add up and they add up quickly and they're not reflected in my example but as you can see uh, it would be a great deal more than just spending hundred and four thousand uh, dollars add some thousands and thousands of dollars to that and we can see quickly that um, home ownership isn't all that it's cracked up to be at least in terms of the uh, American dream and if you decide to rent, I'm not suggesting renting is better. I'm not suggesting home ownership is better. I am just pointing out some of the facts as I see it. But even the renters, uh, they themselves, they pay these costs as well. They just don't pay them to the state or to the insurance company. They pay them to the landlord who is passing the costs on to the renters. So no one escapes. We're all in the system together. Now we go back to the calculator and I'm, I'm kind of gonna I'm gonna change topics for just a minute. So let's say you live in your house for 30 years. You will have spent four hundred and forty-two thousand dollars on a two hundred thousand dollar home. That let's say it's increased in value. Who knows how much could it possibly go up? You know where is the sense in that? This is just another uh, scam, another scheme, and it's sold to the American public as a preferable way to live. You know, no one seems to care that even if you spend a lifetime paying off your mortgage and you have it free and clear and then you die and you bequeath your property to your children or whoever, you will still, or the children, uh, will still pay a property tax it's paid forever. And this says nothing about uh, banks foreclosing on houses, you know, and they just resell the same property, even, you know, just re regular buying and selling. It's a money maker that never stops making money for the banks. You know, they people live in the house and they decide to sell it and then someone else comes along and buys it and goes back to the bank and gets a loan. And they give a loan on the exact same piece of property that they've already profited from. So it's just a perpetual forever it's the present that never stops giving maybe uh we should go into business being governments that would be a great business to be in or be in a bank we should just go into uh business being a banker but anyway it's common sense it's nothing hidden here everyone can see this but for whatever reason we're blinded by the uh the story this is what you got to do this is what you want to be. You want to enjoy the American dream. You got to buy yourself a home and live a life in debt. The end.